Jesse Burst. I'm the founder of SmartGridNews.com, the Internet's oldest and highest-ranked smart grid site, and I'll be your host today. As we talk about next-generation asset management, I want to start by saying thank you to Accenture for all their help in pulling everything together and making it possible to bring this topic to you. And it is an important topic uh, because there's just so much money at stake. Uh, you know, we have such a capital-intensive industry, so much money tied up in assets, and so many of those assets scattered around the field, uh, making it that much harder to uh, maintain and manage them. So if we can do a better job of managing our assets, it can have a, a huge impact on financial performance. And here's, here's the secret. A lot of utilities already have the data they need to get started on next generation asset management. They just need to convert that data into actionable insights. And that's the subject of our webinar today. Often the key is to take the data that already exists from smart meters or from the log files of your IEDs or your substation equipment or from monitors or sensors, take that and blend it with data from the back office and then analyze it, crunch it to pull out the alerts and the insights that can really uh, help you know uh, how better to manage your assets. And so that's what we're uh, up to today and we're going to cover it in these four sections. First, we're just going to spend a, a single slide to kind of give you a big picture of that process, what it looks like to, to do what I just described. Then we're uh, lucky to have someone here from Hydro One to talk about the vision they're pursuing there around asset analytics. Next, we're going to bring a, a guest from Toronto Hydro to talk about some of their grid modernization and asset analytic tools they're creating. And then finally, we're going to wrap up with another slide or two just to give you a sense of what that end state could be. What where, where we might be heading uh, with next uh, generation asset management if we get it right. And here are um, our presenters. Uh, I'm going to bring um, describe these gentlemen in a little more detail when it's their turn to get up. But real quickly, we've got Thor Yarson from uh, Toronto Hydro with us today. Also, Bruno Jesus from Hydro One. And from Accenture, uh, Paul Yarka. Now, these are folks who've uh, actually been out on the front lines. And this is part of our Lessons from the Real World webinar series, where we bring people who are actually rolling up their shirt sleeves and doing this thing. And they come and they tell us the lessons they've learned, the victories they've achieved, the things they do differently if they were starting all over again. I'll be your moderator today. And I just wanted to remind you a couple housekeeping details, and then we're going to uh, plunge right in. You will receive a copy of the slides. It, uh, a link to the PDF will be sent to the email you used to register. You'll also receive an FAQ with some answers. We won't be able to answer all of your questions on live, but uh, we'll uh, send you uh, answers to many of the most frequently asked questions in a separate document. So please do ask questions at any time and as often as you want as we go along. So now I want to bring up uh, Paul Viarka, uh, both Accenture as a company and Paul Viarka as an individual have such a deep expertise in, in this area, so we're real fortunate to have him along today. Uh, Paul is a utilities industry partner at Accenture. He leads their smart grid services asset management practice. He's got nearly 30 years of experience with things such as uh, smart grid, distribution management systems, outage management systems, geographic information systems, enterprise asset management integration, asset investment management, and a lot more. So we're very fortunate to have him along. Paul, oh, thanks for being with us. And uh, would you help us uh, get us started? Thanks, Jesse. Hi, everyone. This is Paul Yarka. I'm very pleased to be with you today and to be a part of this Smart Grid News webinar. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to be with us today. As we know, the Smart Grid is envisioned to optimize three end-to-end T&D utility processes, specifically the customer process, which we hear a lot about, the process concerning operation of the network, and finally, the asset management process, which we hear very little about. My goal with this slide is to frame our discussion this morning and provide a little context for subsequent discussions by our clients and industry colleagues, Bruno Jesus of Hydro One and Thor Yarchison of Toronto Hydro. We're seeing a number of utilities implement some interesting technology, process, and organizational enhancements in their grid modernization capabilities as they move toward increasingly smarter grids. Some, like the two examples that will be presented today, have a very strong regulatory driver. 
In this slide, we see toward the top a series of orange or bronze T&D operational systems or data capture capabilities that utilities are implementing or upgrading to. All of these contribute to better enable their asset performance management capability. As noted in the diagram, the latency of these systems and data sources varies from high latency on the left to low latency on the right. Today, you'll be hearing from Bruno about what the Hydro One team is doing in enhancing their asset performance management capability to enable their ongoing asset strategy work as well as drive their asset investment planning capability. Bruno's presentation, current work, is focused primarily around the Enterprise Asset Management, or EAM, and Condition-Based Maintenance, or CBM capabilities at the top of the slide, and many of the analytics as well you see highlighted in the list to the left and to the right of the Asset Performance Management block in green. In addition, Bruno will present a roadmap for their asset analytics effort it will push their efforts for the asset performance management capability toward the lower latency data and system sources on the upper right. On the other hand, Thor's presentation and current work at Toronto Hydro include both higher and lower latency systems and data sources that cover aspects of their EAM, CBM, utilization sensing, and loss of life analytics capabilities. From Thor's presentation, you get a flavor for the advanced asset management capabilities Toronto Hydro has been and is putting in place. This work illustrates how Toronto Hydro is building out their asset performance management capability, their asset strategy development capability, and their overall asset investment planning capabilities with some of their very recent distribution system level transformer monitoring and analytics improvements. Other utilities are working on a range of enhancements with their traditional and real-time systems and data capabilities across the whole suite of EAM, CBM, dissolved gas analysis, temperature sensing, utilization sensing, and SCADA integration, thereby improving their overall asset management capabilities to support their grid modernization efforts. But no one is really doing them all at this point in time. What makes the Hydro One and Toronto Hydro work unique relative to other industry efforts is that both utilities are implementing some advanced capabilities with the evolving asset analytics they're putting in place today. They're leveraging their experience with publicly available specification or PAS, PAS 55 to successfully achieve information-driven asset management decision-making capabilities. One other thing I'd like to mention is that you can translate the capabilities of asset performance management, asset strategy, and asset investment planning in the green boxes into very different technology and architecture approaches. Utilities are implementing these individual capabilities using either market available software products, various types of data stores, or even data warehouses and analytics solutions. Each approach has its own pros and cons. With that, I'm very pleased to turn the presentation over to Bruno Jesus of Hydro One.